evening and welcome to the Cognitive Rampage. I'm your host as always, Adam Lauer. You guys got to help me come up with like some better intro. I'm getting tired of that same cheesy shit. I'm trying like so hard not to be like, you know, the radio voice guy. You know, the fucker when you, you know, the, the, the Fox guy, the news guy who's just talking to you like a robot. That's right. And then you open your show and you're like, all right, I'm not going to be that guy. And, and then you're like, hi, welcome to the Cognitive Rampage. I'm the jackass still talking like this. Right? <laughs> it's so hard. To, to, That's to, right, because they all start the show the same way. It's fucking annoying. And I, you know, they and have their standard intro line. It, they do. Yeah. And and they, they, go ahead. It's true, but I, and I'm tired of it because I do it every time. And then after I, I watch the show, I'll tell somebody, I'm like, all right, I got to stop that. You know, this whole, hi, welcome. This evening, we're with, no one fucking talks like that. And so, it, what I, you know what I have come to find since I've, and hi, we're just talking now, so welcome. Um, what I found is the more I've been on camera, you know, doing the show, it's so much harder to be your authentic self when you're really in front of a camera. Like, it, it's difficult. People think you can do it or whatnot, you know, but the person that we live, you know, day to day, we do our best to live authentically. But I've noticed since the camera's been on, this facade comes up sometimes, you know, that voice, hi, everything's great in my life, welcome, right? You know, that guy, and until you can, and it's slowly, it's been almost a year and change, and I'm still trying to melt that mask, whatever that is, you know what I mean? It's so, it's fucking difficult, I'm, I'm telling you, it's difficult to try to really do that, and I didn't realize that. I, mean, I got a new respect for people that really can be themselves in entertainment, you know, and aren't roped in. I mean, generally they're controlled by media and shit, but, you know, i got to come up with a better fucking... Hi, welcome to the Cognitive Rampage. Well, next time do it different. <laughs> and that's what your show's all about, change. It's all about change. So you could, do, you could do every show from here on out differently <laughs> at the beginning. That's the truth. You know, if, <laughs> it, it'd be tough. Yeah, well, I know you don't watch the show. But if you were to watch the show, I know you watched a few. But if you watch it all the way back, it's so different. Like it's like I can't make up my own mind either. Whether I'm whether I'm in the street interviewing people or talking to yeah. people or talking to health science mm -hmm. professionals specifically. Right. So you're right. The show has been nothing but change. And so hell, maybe that's what it's supposed to be. It's just you know changing like that constantly instead of some mundane thing. I don't know. But that's why I want to come and chat with you, man. I mean we. We've shared a shitload of conversations, some in short and some in length, you know, from my front porch to your garage, you know, and you're always out working on something, you know, out in the yard. And we even talked once before how, you know, this, our, our country used to be a front porch society and we've turned to this back porch society. Oh, remember, yeah. Remember that talk? I remember that talk. And come to think Everything's of becoming much less personable these days. It is. And well, look at us. We're shooting a show on the back porch. Right. You know, but I remember, you know, those days and, you know, how that happened and transitioned. But you're a front yard kind of neighbor. That's, you know, that's you. Uh, you know? and, I, and I call you Cincinnati for it. So yeah. that's your nickname for me. But, you know, I got to know you that way because you're a front, a, a front porch society guy. I got to talk to you. You're always out playing landscaping or doing something in one of your houses, you know. Uh, happened to be this one that I, that I met you at. And I could just walk across the street and we'd say hello and. And then I valued that, you know, and that's why I've wanted to come and chat with you on the back porch of all places, you know, and just chat with you. But, yeah, as in an informal setting. <laughs> right. Uh, well, until I go, hi, I'm Adam Lowry and welcome to the Cognitive. Until I do that, you know, then all of a sudden it's not formal anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't answer those right now. Yeah. Oh, if, if you want to participate, just uh, go to the Cognitive Rand page, Facebook page, post on there, or my personal page, uh, or if you're on Twitter, go to uh, Adam's Rand page uh, and add anything you want to. Uh, There's nothing to add to this deep-ass conversation yet, but um, I don't know. What's your thoughts on a front porch or back porch society? Why have we become that? Why are we that? I mean, what do you think's caused that? Well, I think people are generally afraid to initially start up a conversation with somebody they don't know. It's not comfortable. <laughs> so you shy away from the comfortability, you know? Yeah. You take the safe route. 
go to the backyard. Then you don't have to talk to anybody out there. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's true. But we don't, right? And what? Right. Our society's also become this. Yeah. You know, but it's funny. We're still reaching out to try to talk to people, if you will, in a way. Not literally. But yet we run to our backyards. We run to our backyards. But then we run to our backyards on our phone <laughs> oh. trying to talk to people. Yeah. When really, walk out front. Right. Walk across the street. I think uh, Joe Rogan was talking about actually that this morning is they were just uh, shooting the shit about how he was thinking about trying to buy some land and move all of his friends and family to this area. And then they started talking about how, well, that's what we used to do is as, you know, a, a small family would live in an area and your friends lived in the area and everybody lived in that community, in that neighborhood, if you will. I mean, that was really how and everyone helped everybody and knew everybody. I mean, we started that, and now we still have these even cookie cutter subdivisions, and no one knows anybody. In the, in the majority, I'm generalizing. I mean, obviously, some that do talk, but I, I, I don't know. Would it be safe to say that the majority are staying in the backyard? I would say so. I would say a lot of people don't know who their next door neighbor is. Hmm. Don't you think? I would agree. I would agree. And uh, until you need them, right? Right. Or until they need some shit. Yeah, <laughs> it needs some shit. We were talking. I know you have a uh, mechanical engineering background, like forever, right? Yeah. And we've talked about it, obviously. We were just starting to talk about that um, the phrase "as easy as riding a bike" as there's as in order to ride a bike. And remember the guy he had picked two different ways or whatever. We're used to steering, so he made the bike steer opposite. So if you turned left, it went right. If you turned right, it went left. And trying to prove how long it could take somebody to relearn something. And we were talking about that just a little bit ago. Yes. And you saw it, right? Like the TED Talk or some shit like that? Yeah. And so what the guy had done was he had made the bike to where if you tried to turn one way, the bike actually turned the other way. Right. So you had to force yourself to turn the wrong way, to go the right way. <laughs> and how many times do you have to do that in life? Yeah. But I, it was funny to watch then when his kid did it, when his son did it. His son picked it up faster, much faster than he did. And he was filming that. And almost half the time, the young one had learned, okay, this and this. Oh, yeah. Right. So after so many years, you know, of learning to ride a bike this way, when we make that so as easy as riding a bike, well, if you switch something like that, that has been a behavior pattern for so long in your life, and you make a one minor change, just about turning an opposite direction, yeah. and all of a sudden we are completely uncoordinated. Everything goes to shit, you know? How do we correlate that really to people's lives, man? Hmm. Well, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, it, it's almost... Hmm. Um, it's, I mean, we do that. I mean, one, you know, one minor thing, a divorce. And I say minor thing because our perceptions allow things to be major and traumatic, how we perceive them. Right. I get a lot of shit for that too, bro. When I'm like, there are no traumatic events. And people are like, motherfucker, yeah, there is traumatic. And I go, well, as a, compared to what? Okay, I mean, are we saying that life is not traumatic itself? Yeah, life is traumatic. No. So what's a traumatic event? High stress, <laughs> you know, when, when you, you know. But life. But, yeah, it it happens. Mm-hmm. Right, it's that it's the normal part of life for those traumatic events. But my all I yeah. really try to do is curb people to the perception of what we create traumatic events. And so, changing the yeah. steering on a bike could be considered a traumatic change, a, a drastic change to to something. When truly, it's only really two other new behaviors we have to adjust to, versus all the things we're trying to remember to do to ride the bike. I mean, you got to pedal, you got to balance, watch where you're going. To go this and this is very minor in the idea of riding the bike itself. But people can even go straight. He would stand on a stage six feet away at a high school and would put like 100, 200 bucks up and go, if you can make it to me, I give it to you. They couldn't do it. Wow. You know, so if we perceive things or changes, transitions mm -hmm. in our lives that we label as traumatic, as simple as right and left changing, we I think we miss everything else that's functioning at the same time. 
And so we perceive something traumatic, even though it could be a minor, like I quoted, you know, divorce, a minor thing in your life versus the whole mechanics of the whole thing. Yeah. So what you're saying is you build you build a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. You think it's going to really be bad, but it isn't. It's just a small change. Well, how much is that as a, I don't know shit about mechanics at all. So, I mean, how much yeah. is that, are there rules or, or laws of something in mechanics about something minor that doesn't work affecting the whole mechanism of something? Mm. No, I don't think so. I mean, mechanics are all pretty straightforward. But I, I think really what, where this example boils down to is you're really changing you're you're relearning how to ride that bike, so you got you're building new neural pathways. You're changing. You're forcing yourself to change. And for the younger boy, like you said, he was able to do that much quicker, because children, when you're young, are constantly creating new neural pathways, so it's easier for them to do that. The older guy, you know, his mind's already starting to get too locked in, so it's harder to change. And it's a, a one piece, an entire behavior pattern. You know, that's and that's what I look at. But when you first watch it, you even perceive that, well, all he did was change how to turn right and left, right? You see people get really arrogant. So where he's like, look, all I did was this, and all you got to do is this. And they go, I can do that. So yeah, their first yeah. perception is, oh, that's nothing. It's a minor nothing. I can definitely do that. And they go at something with bravery, with enthusiasm and confidence based on a, just a perception. And then once they get on and they realize, oh, my God, this small thing affects the entire mechanism of just going straight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. all he changed was turning. Mm -hmm. And you can't go six feet straight ahead. But we're willing to attack it with this arrogant confidence before we even test anything. So why could, can't, or don't, or I don't know, maybe they do. Most people, something changes in the behavior of their life, minor or big, but they put a perception onto what that change is, and sometimes just let it devastate them into a hole, as opposed to being the arrogant person who goes, I can ride that, who doesn't even know, but they think they know. So it's a positive perception to take a confident approach at something that everyone knows is not going to work out, but it could. But in most part, we choose to go, look at this change. Oh my God, all of it is fucked now. Most people don't even try. Where does that arrogant, I got this come from versus mm -hmm. when it's a life change that people just say, no, nah, I can't do it. Yeah, it's, it's just all really your decision, you know, the decisions you make about things. So you, you like you say, I think where, what it boils down to is don't let big things that you perceive as big affect your life. Just go on with them. And keep moving. Yeah. And keep moving, you know. I mean, people die. Life's, you know, life is a struggle. It's a, There's lots of tragedies, you know. There's... And there's very happy times too. And you know, you kind of bounce back between those. But you'll always, you know, you, you'll always bounce back. So you can't let those that those tragedies get you down. Hmm. It it makes me wonder, you know, when I think about people that are mechanistic that can look at an engine, take it apart, fix shit, add stuff, put it right back together from a, they understand the domino effect, the one, the cause and effect, very, yeah. very practical. Yeah, 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 you know? right. I look at something like that and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't, you know, at least I believe that, you know? And, but that person who's mechanistic, mechanical in some way may look at something that's abstract or artistic and kind of see it as it's in the way. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not real. You know, what, I don't know, what separates to you that kind of person? What made you choose the mechanical route, if you will, and what you did for a living? I mean, you have got a yeah. huge history in, right. in, in mechanical engineering. What, what, what pushed you in your life to push that way? Well, I always wanted to know how things worked. So, you know, I was big into knowing the why. Why this happens, why that happens. 
harvest of the. So uh, that was always a, a prime driver for me. And when you figure out why, you know, that's it's kind of fun. So, Did I dig that, bro? That, that's so from where I come from with my theory from. Um, my theory comes from, I, I start to teach people when you want to change your thinking um, from irrational thinking to, to rational thinking, it's all good. And um, they ask how, you know, how do I start thinking more rationally versus irrationally? And I said, well, the first thing you do is change punctuation. Stop exclamation points and periods and start ending everything you're stating with a question mark. Very simply, just start asking yourself why. Uh, right? We tend to make statements about ourselves as if they're fact. Right? Instead of going, well, why do I feel like I'm this? Why do I feel like I'm that? You know? Oh, yeah. Right? But people get too caught up in the theory of it, the abstractness of it. When, you know, I look at you and you're, I've known you, I don't know, how long we've known each other as neighbors? Oh, uh, four months, something. Yeah, something short. Yeah. And, but in that time, we've, we've shared some deep conversations about personal things in your life and my life and back and forth and shared those. And we have. We have, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, what that, well, one of the things that I have to say and that I thought about saying before this interview even started was that just to talk about it, that, that you really helped me a lot, quite honestly. I mean, damn, man. And you've given me a number of new perspectives or different ways to think about things that I said, yeah. You know, that makes sense. You know, yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, man. so. That's cool. That's kind of yeah. smart, man. So when you have a talk like this and, and people, in my mind, I think you're going to be very successful primarily because you're able to communicate those kind of thoughts very well. You know, people relate to you. So I think you'll. You know, that's like you know, when, if somebody listens to this talk and gets just one or two useful facts, it was worth it because those small, oh yeah, I should think about that more. Oh, when this happens, I shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, it changes your life. It, it makes you a better person. Thank you, dude. I'm. I'm verklempt, honestly, man. Well, I, you... I didn't see that shit coming at all. Well, you, you definitely have a great ability for that. I, I have my moments, man. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, I like to tell people, if it if it touched you in some way, it, it probably wasn't yeah. me. Right. Either it, it wasn't me or you already knew it yeah. or something. But what I was about to get yeah. to before you were very yeah. kind, dude. Yeah, yes. plus, man, you know... I got to stay home, man. The other dude, thing is... Home. I mean, you've given me so many of them, you know, like all these things start popping in my mind, like you calling somebody an alcoholic. Well, oh, what is it? You, you shouldn't say I am an alcoholic. Right. You know, and when I initially heard that, I didn't really get it. But after you think about it for a while and think, oh, you, you know, what's behind that thought, it really makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So. Thank you. So You're hopefully, undeserving of that, man. So but. hopefully, our viewers during this conversation <laughs> that we have will catch a, just one or two facts, and you know, and and see what I do is I look through those. Give me all of a clip, neighbor man. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. dude. You know, all, yeah. all I was about to lean in toward was telling you over these four months that we've shared what we shared is I've seen you as mentally healthy, and and motivated to enjoy your next day and what i was and in in that time what i said is i've always seen you as kind of strong together and what i was trying to link was i wondered if the mechanical thinking that you have and the asking of the why even in just your career applied to your life if that played a role in keeping you i don't know consistent because you seem like a consistent guy like if i had to you know what i mean i am and so like a machine you know, and so I wondered how much it's funny that you repeat the words that, well, you know, asking why is fun. Well, that sounds like me when I'm doing therapy, when I'm talking or doing a speech, you know, asking why is fun. And I, how much did that could have played a role in keeping that for you? I mean, you already knew it. 
You know, I tell people if I say something that resonates with you, it's because you already knew it. You know, I like what Plato says is all humans are all knowing all the time. We just have to be reminded. You never really lost your keys is what I added to that. You just retrace your steps and find it. Yeah. You know, so for me, if I ever reach somebody or touch somebody in a way, one, I say it probably ain't me. And two, you already knew it anyway. I just reminded you. Well, I don't know that you did. I'm open. That's why I wanted to chat with you, man, on cameras. Well, because I, we do I, share opposite views and yeah. some things. Mm -hmm. But it's been great because we're able to talk about it. Right. I disagree with it, please. Yeah, yeah in, in my mind, it, it's something, it, it's a thought change where you say, oh, I originally I didn't understand, didn't disagree, you know, I disagree with that, but now I understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, some of those complex thoughts, you know, it, there's just so much behind them. Like that thought, um, the best place for you to be is uncomfortable. Yeah, that's you know I, what I, mean? I love that phrase. I say that shit all the time. Yeah, uncomfortable is where the change is. is what I say. Yeah, it's where the change is. So what? And after you told me that, you know what I what I what I did was, I thought about that when I became uncomfortable. You know, most of the time I was afraid to do something for some reason or another and you just got to push through that you know and, and get it done so uh, that, that's the guy you yeah. always remind me of man you're the just get it done guy All right you know what I mean you're yeah. that's I envy that in some people man when I when I see people that use that skill to better their lives or, or build a life for themselves you know I, I envy those that just the ones that just get it done you know for me, I always got to add some sort of theory to it or deep meaning and philosophical yeah. rewind, you know, and be the fucking annoying artist sometimes about my life and shit. And so I envy sometimes those mechanical people that are able to still see the joy in what they do, allow their mechanical abilities to build them what it is they need and cultivate their happiness and, you know, and stay that. You know, I envy that in people. You know, it's a, it's a skill that I, I try to practice. I'm trying to get better at, you know, myself. Because I'm, I'm, you all know, I'm everywhere. You know, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Everything is beautiful and poetic to a point and meaning. And, there, you know, there's no problem but opportunity, you know. But as Leo would say, uh, with all things cool, calm, and benign, I'll solve anyone's problem unless it's mine. And uh, 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 <laughs> it's the truth. That, that man, Leo, is right, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we, but we do that. But I think that's good. You know, some of our best conversations have turned to where we do disagree. You know, because we have um, we have some differences of opinions in certain things, from political views sometimes. Uh, I know we talked, or um, uh, some other things. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. We've had different views at some point, but we have found growth, myself too, from those views with you. I too have found myself thinking about things that you've said um, as it relates to a more BMPC personal issue that we've talked about and someone that you've talked to. Seeing your me mechanical approach from it gave me growth to see things from another side too. Have I been completely vague enough that no one knows what the fuck I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to show you back that in our disagreements of views on very few things, I have found that growth myself from this. Yeah, because it gives you a little bit different perspective. It changes you. It gets you out of the rut that you're in. It does. And mm -hmm. how much more would we or could we be growing as a community, as a world, as a globe, period? Up back to it for that front porch society who's talking to our neighbors and who's open to the views and beliefs that they share without judgment and use it for growth in each other's life. What kind of country would this be? Oh, it'd be a changed country. It'd be a great place to live. What would you change right now about this country? What would I change about the country? Oh, I, 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 mean, the, I, I don't think I'd change anything because it, the country is what the country is. It's what the country is developed into. So you can't be unhappy about that. You know, you can't be unhappy that 
the guys in Washington aren't doing their job or, you know, the, the system isn't as optimal as it could be, which it is. Um, you know, you, you just got to say that's, that's what it is. It's okay. I mean, this is a great country. We, we got nothing to complain about here. Mm. <laughs> and you know, that's where we jump. That's it. You know, that's where we find our, yeah. our sides is because I, right. I would have changed most of it <laughs> to be truthful from our education system on up. Well, there's a thousand things that can be improved. I mean, yeah, perfection, I like better. perfection is so hard to achieve. I mean, it's, but this world is an imperfect world. You know, people screw up. Um, I forget things, you know, I, I, I tripped last night, you know, it, it, it happens, you know? It's, yeah. it's, I think you used the best dialogue there, man. I, you know, I was mm -hmm. saying things got to change, but I think you made a slight dialogue changer that was a big difference. You said, I think things can be improved. Yeah. That's a big difference from how I think people, because yeah. look, I talk all about dialogue when I talk to clients and, and about changing their life. You know, dialogue is where the change is too, just like uncomfortable. You know, so that small dialogue you changed, I like better than what I said. And what do we all scream? Obama screamed it. We all screamed to change, change, change. And does change imply perfection is in change? And so I love your word better because it said things can be an Im improved. And I think that's much more rational to say that the country can be improved as to say that the country needs to change. That's big, man. Mm -hmm. Seriously. We all scream change, 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 but change yeah. is difficult as we know. Change is uncomfortable. And do we really want complete change? Some do, some don't, but maybe what we're really looking for is improvement. We are, because when you're asking for change, you're dissatisfied with the system as it is. Yeah. You're dissatisfied with the politicians in Washington not doing their job. You're just you're dissatisfied with the economic situation and that it's hard for people to get jobs. I'm not being wrong, I'm just checking. So you now. want change, you want improvement and change, you know? So that's why the incumbent candidate, you know, from the opposite party has always got an advantage because he's saying the president administration hasn't done a very good job. You need to let me come in and change. <laughs> and, and change. But I mean, isn't it, I mean, isn't it true though, that like in the conversation, as long as they keep up the argument, that's where they get rich from. So if we can, maybe the ones like me that are screaming, we need change are just assisting to the argument perpetuation, you know, the argument perpetuating, sorry, the argument perpetuating when the idea is we need to be screaming, let's improve it. And maybe can the other side then say, no, no, we're not going to improve it. See, the other side can say, no, no, let's not change it because it works. The Republicans say don't change it because it works or change it because it doesn't work. Democrats say change it because it doesn't work or don't change it because it works. And as long as we stay divided and they keep the fight and we keep saying change and they say don't and they say don't, we say do, nothing fucking changes. No. Instead no. of, what if... Democrats go, we need improvement. Would the Republicans, Ray Wood, <laughs> scream back and go, no, we don't need improvement? Who could say that? So could a simple change, this is deep, Doug. Maybe I just want it to be deep. Yeah. But either way, could a simple change in dialogue in the country from the powerful ones that are screaming change and the powerful ones screaming no change, if we both just started saying improve? Oh, yeah, for sure that's what needs to happen. Absolutely. You heard it here first on the Cognitive Rampage from my neighbor, Bill. <laughs> Bill has started the change or the improvement. There I go. See, like riding a bike. It's like yeah. behavior. We go right back to saying change. Yeah, it's about changing you. Improving you. Improving you. I like, well, some people what, like to say optimization, right? I like to say life optimization, right? Sounds yeah. a little techie. But... I like the word improve, man. I think that's a that's a note to kind of we're losing light anyway on the podcast. I, I was thinking that. Yeah, but it's a that's a great note to end. Maybe it's the one takeaway, you know, for everybody is that a simple change like the direction yeah. 
can cause havoc right. if you perceive it to. But if we only just look to improve our worlds, maybe we can work together? I'm sure we can. Yeah. yeah. Until next time at the Cognitive Rampage. I know it was short. We're losing light. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you uh, sometime randomly on the Rampage. My neighbor Bill, Adam, out.